Your time is up. It's time to die. Let's go! What do we do? Car cops? <laughs> A plan. Let's get some weapons. Wait, chili powder, girl. What I'm finna do? Cook? Sorry, girl. We ran out of that. What's up, Melvin? What's up, Jay? What's what going on? on? First question for, for Jay. I got to ask, man, like, when you got that, that big break on SNL, you're doing 128 episodes, following... Damn, I didn't even know I did that many. Shit, what? syndication. That's crazy. <laughs> Daniel Garvey, uh, Eddie Murphy, like, did you get the big head? Like, or, like, I, I mean, not saying that, you, that that's, like, a result now that you have, like, a... A, a big hit, but like, how hard is it? Like in that moment, to say like, yo, Eddie Murphy was right here in this um, dressing room doing this thing. Like, how hard was it to stay centered? I, I don't even think. I, I think I was more focused on the work and trying to uh, solidify myself in that place because of all the chatter that was going on online about me just being able to do impressions. So. I was I was trying to I was trying to work and and get some other stuff in there. So the fact that. <clears throat> It was such a prestigious establishment. I already knew that, but man, I just wanted to. I just wanted to make my mark and and, and kind of focus, kind of focus on that. Cause I'll never, I'll never be heady. I'm I'm not that guy. You feel me? I'm the same. I'm the same guy I was, except I have a little more wisdom. I'm the same dude I was at the Funny Bone when Charlie Murphy pulled me out of there and took me on a road with him at 19. Eddie Murphy's brother. So. I had heard the comparisons. I heard everything, so I was just focusing on making my making my mark on that show. And uh, luckily, you know, I'm still here. You know what I mean? So, absolutely. Take a card. At least we know it's working. <laughs> Probably runs on racism. <laughs> now that is one battery that ain't dying no time soon. Oh, that's so powerful, right there, baby. Pick a card. Okay, calm down. I just did. Yeah, and you better watch how you talking to my lady, okay? Okay. What you got? You are a black character in a horror movie. Prove that you can stay alive. Name one black character that survived a horror movie. You must answer correctly, or you die. The oh, so this is just an aggressively named trivia game. <laughs> Hold up, were they even in horror movies when this game was created? Baby, you're thinking too much about this. All right, I know the answer. It is Jada Pinkett, Omar Epps, Scream 2. Boom, Sambo. <laughs> first to die. What are you talking about? I honestly think that the studio didn't have the budget to keep him the whole movie. Mm -hmm. That's why they had to die first. <laughs> uh, Melvin, like, I, I love what you do on uh, social media with the home improvements and everything like that and all that stuff you was doing. But um, of course, we like loved you in the way back and, and house party, but everybody kind of <laughs> like really gravitated to you and um, and uh and snowfall as as man boy and i know yes your 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 stint on the show ended before this season but how in touch were you with this uh see you this final season did you did you have insight on the script or and how did it feel to see see the last episode uh yeah yeah i was tapped in it was you know it was one of my favorite shows before i was on it and you know i, I grew to love all of the all of the characters so of course i was tapped in to see how they ended it they they just so happened to send me the last episode randomly. I hadn't gotten an episode since I had died two seasons pre uh, previously. So I was like, why did you send me the season finale? So it was hard for me to not look at it, but I didn't. And um, I think it ended in a, a, a great way. It, it showed the reality of, um, you know, that happens to some of those guys. I felt like if he had died, um, he would have been a martyr. Everybody would have looked up to him, but seeing him become what he did is just like a... Uh, a real reality um, and a, like, is it was, it was true to, it was true to the game, you know? I know a lot of people who was in a, a position of power back then and now they like bums. And it's, it's sadder than seeing them die because you're seeing them like deteriorate. Yeah. Yeah, his teeth was brown as hell. I said, good God. 
teeth brown? Shoot, shit. my cousin, my little cousin had a brown tooth before. When I was two, when he was two, and we used to say, "Yo, if you come close and I flick it, it just, just, just dissipate." That's <laughs> that's what that's how Franklin's teeth were looking. If you plucked them, they would disappear. I'm not even on the show. Why am I talking about it? Uh, <laughs> Me neither. Shit, that? the blackening. The blackening. Sixteen. <laughs> In yeah, theaters, yeah, yeah. everywhere. This is a great, this is a great show. Y'all got a lot of jokes about interactions with the cops and the, and the park ranger and stuff. And I, I want to take you back to another time, Jay, when um, right around oh, God uh, George it. Floyd, when you ran into a situation with the cops and they had their their knee on your neck. Like, how 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 real does that make it for all these other people? We see you on White Famous and all these other shows and Saturday Night Lives. Yeah. I mean, you're very recognizable for you to be treated just like me, who's a lot less recognizable by the cops. I mean, like, how, how real do you think just that situation happening to you makes it feel for, for everybody else? I think it puts it all in perspective. It, and the perspective is, uh, no matter what, uh, being a black person in America, you are a black person in America. It does not matter your financial tax bracket. It doesn't matter the status that you have. It doesn't matter who you know. We are all, at the end of the day, you cannot get this off. And since you can't get this off, it is important and incumbent of everybody to be proud of that and speak up when you do have the opportunity to speak up because it shouldn't be happening as much as it does happen. And, um, you know, a lot of a lot of brothers and sisters in this country, they're not here to talk about that anymore. But luckily, I am. I'm still here to entertain folks. I'm still here to uh, uh, work and, and live in my purpose. And I and I feel I feel I feel blessed because it could have went the other way. So for everybody that goes through it, I have a, a piece of me hurts with them. And even before that happened to me, a piece of me was hurting for them because that's a part of me. And um, seeing anybody treated unfairly uh, from my side or any other side, but especially my side, it, it, it's a it, it's daunting. It it, it uh and it, it makes you it, it makes you appreciate things a lot more, you know. Well, I appreciate you guys, man. I'm, I'm I'm blessed that we still have you here to entertain us as well, and you and Melvin, like y'all, some great actors and uh, always entertaining, man. I like to see y'all do y'all thing. So thank you, brother. We appreciate, appreciate it. it.